Welcome back to the second hour of our program. Tom Hartman here with you. And I, I want to get into what I think is, A, one of the most important books that I've read in the last decade or longer, and uh, B, one of the, what I think is probably going to be one of the biggest issues that Americans, Europeans, um, basically the entire world, uh, in, in Asia for that matter, they are dealing with, and that is the, the, the rise, the economic and military rise of China and the meaning and consequence of that. Uh, Eamon Fingleton is with us. Uh, he is the author of a new book, In the Jaws of the Dragon, the subtitle America's Fate in the Coming Era of Chinese Hegemony. Uh, and uh, thank you, for, sir, for being on, on the air with us uh, live from Japan. I know it's the middle of the night for you. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, my pleasure, Tom. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, by the way, I, uh, I should mention the website, y your website is unsustainable.org, and uh, this book is also my book of the month over at buzzflash.com, so uh, if you want to read my review of it, people can go over to buzzflash.com and even pick up a copy of the book there. Of course, it's available through any of the other uh, normal sources for books. Um, in the news, uh, Eamon, today, there's I, I just quickly looking at, at uh, you know, just Googling China in the news. Uh, the Dalai Lama is urging China to open up Tibet. This after it has been, after this ghost uh, computer hacking story has come out. Uh, the Australian government, uh, Kevin Rudd now is, is saying that, uh, uh, is defending his pursuit of closer ties with China. He's getting, he, some, some, some of the voices in uh, Australia are getting very concerned about this. There's this kind of bizarre love-hate relationship between uh, particularly Americans, but I think all over the world, with cheap Chinese goods on the one hand, and on the other hand, the fact that this is a, a government that calls itself communist, but is increasingly, uh, from reading your book, and I'm not sure if this is a word that you would use, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, fascistic, essentially. Yeah, I, I uh, wouldn't uh, object to that word. Uh, basically, uh, authoritarian would be maybe more the word I would yeah. use. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, 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 there's a big problem because uh, China produces all the stuff that people want to, to buy. And also, uh, there's a, a separate political issue, which is that China has the money that uh, certain countries need to borrow. You talk in your book about how China's um, Confucianism, China is governed by a, uh, you know, America, for, for example, kind of, and many of the European countries are operating on a, a school of thought that could be arguably called, and you know, the Enlightenment, post-Enlightenment thinking. Um, China has reinvented Confucianism almost in a Machiavellian for, uh, form, and uh, talk about that a little bit. How, you know, their, their governing philosophy and thinking process. have the right to govern the country the, uh, without any real check uh, on, on the part of the people. Um, uh, ordinary people are supposed to just get on with their lives um, and leave it to the specialists to run the country, and the specialists are the, the top of brass in the Communist Party in this case, the Mandarins in former times. Uh, right. So um, they... Um, uh, therefore, have uh, these people at the top who are highly manipulative, uh, who basically, as you say, are Machiavellian, um, who um, can uh, um, be extremely, um, I suppose, uh, what's the word, uh, duplicitous would be one word, um, uh, coercive. Um, they can manip manipulate people through all sorts of blackmail, uh, uh, the end justifies the means uh, is, is maybe the ultimate uh, philosophical point here. Uh, mm -hmm. In the West, we, we don't think that that's right. We sometimes make exceptions for ourselves when we fight wars and so on. But uh, as a general proposition, uh, the end does not justify the means in, in, in Western society and Western uh, ethics. Um, but it does uh, in China. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and you talk in your book also about how, for example, about a third of the population has moved uh, in search of jobs and things, and it's illegal to do so without permission of the government. Pretty much everybody in China is guilty of some kind of crime, and because there are so many of these laws in the books, and that one of the principal instruments of state power 
is the selective enforcement of laws that, that pre even against the, 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 the new millionaires and billionaires in China. Uh, when the state decides that these folks are no longer their friends, they will find one of the laws that this person has broken and, and harshly punish them uh, up to and including the death penalty. Do I have that right? Yeah, uh, I call it selective enforcement. Um, the idea is that the laws are written strictly, very often so strictly, that uh, the most honest uh, citizen really cannot um, comply with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they are... Um, they, they, they're written strictly, but enforced laxly as a general proposition. Uh, so most people can can get away with quite a lot. Um, but uh, those people who, in some way, offend the authorities, maybe on something quite different, uh, are suddenly arraigned, and uh, the the full penalty of the law is applied. Yeah, this is something that, for example, in the United States, uh, well, even now in some parts of the United States, I suppose, but you know, widespread 50 or 100 years ago. Uh, loitering laws, for example, uh, if, if uh, black people gathered together, loitering laws would be vigorously enforced and they would be broken up and, and arrested if it was white people gathering together. No big deal. Uh, selective, you know, selective enforcement is something that we are not unfamiliar with, but it's been raised to uh, an, essentially an art form in China uh, and, and, right. is, and is used as everybody in the country. Uh, from reading your book, the sense I got was that everybody in the country realizes that at any moment they could end up in prison and they could end up in prison for life or even executed um, and, and not even really be sure which law they broke. Yeah, and um, it, it basically it applies to everything. It applies to, for instance, tax uh, in uh, China. You, uh, the, the tax laws are ambiguous, so... Uh, uh, most people don't pay their full tax, and they get away with quite a lot. But mm -hmm. uh, if, if they're uh, in some way in the, the, the authorities' uh, uh, bad books, uh, the authorities can come around and say, well, the, the, the tax laws have been broken. Uh, you, you, you write in your book, we're talking with Eamon Fingleton. His new book is In the Jaws of the Dragon, America's Fate in the Coming Era of Chinese Hegemony. And uh, unsustainable.org, the website, and, and uh, my book review is, is over at, uh, at buzzflash.com, although you can find the book pretty much anywhere. Um, you write in the book about how we thought that we won, when we won the war against Japan, that they had embraced our shall we say, post-Renaissance, post-Enlightenment European worldview and way of thinking, and had become an Asian version of America with American values, when in fact they were uh, very resentful of us, they were playing MacArthur for a fool, which he w apparently was, and that there has been a, a 50, 60, 70, how many, I don't know how many years it's been since the end of World War II, I uh, can't do math in my head that fast, but anyhow, they, they've been pursuing this plan, basically, of, that, that is hardly small-d democratic, uh, and that they are essentially in collusion with the Chinese in creating a Sino, uh, an Asian sphere of influence that uh, will rule the world, essentially. It, 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 am I, A, saying this right, and B, that sounds almost paranoid. Uh, give, me, give me some stories about this. Well, um, think of it this way. Uh, if uh, the United States had lost the war, if uh, Chicago and Boston had uh, been uh, on the receiving end of uh, atomic bombs uh, and the Japanese had come in, uh, that there would be a lot of resentment uh, among Americans towards the uh, new uh, rulers. Um, um, how Americans would have responded is another matter, but uh, in the Japanese case, um, they had the culture to uh, basically be um, a polite and, uh, in fact, in many cases, friendly to the um, uh, arriving Americans, but that didn't mean that they were in any way uh, sincerely cooperating with, with the Americans' agenda, that they mm -hmm. uh, decided that the best way to deal with the Americans and to get them uh, out of our country as fast as possible is, is to appear cooperative. Right. Um, and, and so that they maintained an absolutely firm line. There was no terrorism against the Americans, for instance, as we have seen in, in Iraq very, very extensively and very unfortunately uh, right. in our own time. Um, there was, uh, I, I, 
virtually, I, I think I'm right in saying there was absolutely no terrorism against the Americans. Yeah. Uh, no, there, there wasn't. My father was in the occupation forces, and you know, he said they, they were embraced. I mean, they, they literally uh, welcomed them with flowers, to quote Don Rumsfeld. We're, we're talking with Eamon Fingleton, his new book, In the Jaws of the Dragon. Sir, can you stick around through this break and we can talk a little bit more? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, speaking with us from your home in Japan in the middle of the night there. We'll be right back. Tom Hartman here with you. TomHartman.com also if you want to drop into our live chat room.